Live now by Paul Wakefield, who we allowed to have time out so we could listen to Alan Hinks, but we heard from him earlier in the main auditorium. If you have any questions for Paul, we're on Twitter, hashtag onland. We'd love to hear from you wherever you are, New Zealand, Canada, Australia, the States, or anywhere in Western Europe. Drop us a line at hashtag onland. Paul, that was stunning this morning. I mean, your Thank photographs you. are amazing thank you obviously you're balancing the commercial with the personal and you talked about that how much creative license do you have with the commercial bits that you do um quite a lot i mean there, there are if once you get a job they're obviously choosing the photographer for their personal style um because you know there are a lot of commercial photographers out there they could choose and they tend to go for someone's um look uh, and when i mean that i mean their style um so it's, it, is, it is my job, really, to get as much of, it, of, of my personal work into it as I possibly can. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. Um, but I think because I work instinctively on my personal work, I can't but help bring some of that into my commercial work. So it's not a, it's not, I don't actually have to make an effort um, because I'm constructing the image the way I like it, but I still have a layout to work to, and I have to respect that. Mm -hmm. So you it's have not, your it's not my it's not my photograph. It's it's a it's the agency, the client, the agencies, and the team's photograph. It's a big, big team effort, and and I have to respect that. But I do have to put something of myself in it. And you've got agents: New York, Paris, and and London. And London. Yeah. And it sounds terribly glamorous. You're all over the world. And I sound like a perfume, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> How glamorous is it? It's not actually that glamorous. It's it's incredibly good fun. It's incredibly good fun, but it's incredibly hard work. Um, it's very risky, but I enjoy the risk. You can't afford to um, m make a mistake. Um, you can make little mistakes. Um, and also on jobs, things always go wrong. Mm -hmm. However good you plan things, they always go wrong. And you have to, you have to not panic and you have to get around them and you have to um, have backup. Do you get nervous? Never. I get very nervous before uh, uh, I, I work. But as soon as I step onto the set, if you like, and when I mean it's, it's not in the studio, I mean in, in, the, whole, if, in, the, in the arena of the job, mm -hmm. I'm completely tranquil. Yeah. But I'm very busy mm -hmm. and I'm very active and my antenna are like this. Um, but I'm not, ner no, I'm, not, I'm not nervous, no, because I actually really love it. Yes, you can tell, I mean, the way you speak about it with that passion. Do you ever get annoyed or are you ever disappointed with what a client does with your image? No, not really. I mean, I might be disappointed, yes, but I never get angry mm. um, because after it's gone out away from me, I, I sometimes have a lot of work to do in the retouching of, the, of a job now because mm. it all goes on system and there's a lot of work to do after you've, you've taken the pictures. You might take um, half a dozen pictures that, w that need to be put together. I mean, one of the biggest comps I ever did was 30 pictures and they had to be put together and I had to oversee that uh, with the retoucher. So there's a lot of work, uh, sometimes there's a lot of work afterwards. And so if you've got that control, you can keep it. But if that control goes out of, um, out of the company that I choose to use to um, the agency in another country, I've got no control. We saw, thinking about the challenges and things that you have, the photographs for Air Mauritius of the butterflies and the feathers, and you talked about the challenges within those. Do you still come up against challenges that you've never had to deal with before? I, I, every job has got something that is a little bit different to, to, uh, to something else. But that, you know, for that, that, that was a particular challenge because that was a lot of retouching. Uh, there was an, there was, it was all photographic, but it was all elements put together. Um, it wasn't really straight. It, wasn't re it was straight photography, but um, you had to imagine all the elements in your in your mind and you had to keep them in your mind for each ad as you were going along i mean for example there was one of shells and the clouds are, uh, are made of shells and i thought this is going to be the easiest one i'll just dump a load of shells on blue paper and fiddle around with them but it just didn't work like that it was so difficult because if you didn't have a, a, a shell looking like a shell if you thought well, what's that blob there what's this blob there what's that blob <laughs> there so you had to arrange every single one in the cloud um, and, and then, of course, once you start doing that, it starts looking forced. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's quite tricky. And it's, it's, it's more unusual for you, I think, because a lot of our speakers have talked about the time and patience that landscape photographers need to have. W you obviously do have all that time and patience when you're arranging things like that. But very often, as you say, there's a lot of preparation and you'll go and you'll do sort of 
initial shots and look at light and everything else. But when you actually get to taking certain shots, you are under pressure. You do have a deadline. I'm under, I'm under massive pressure. Yeah, and, and 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 some of the some of the um, some of the the moments that you need to get the the pictures are are ten minutes yeah. at a certain time of light, and that and if you don't get it in that ten minutes, that's the day you've got. Um, that everyone's got on the team to do that shot, and if you don't get in that ten minutes, you're stuffed. And that, you, so you must have quite an adrenaline buzz with what it's you're doing. It's incredibly an adrenaline buzz. It's like being, it's like being um, in, in a race, mm -hmm. not with uh, not with any any other competitor, but with with the elements, if you like, and with uh, with all the other um, you know problems that that, it, that that involves. But it's great. It's good fun. How much do you like helicopters? Yeah. You're all right with them. I guess a, you have to be. I've been up in a few, and you know, as long as you've got a good pilot, that's you know. <laughs> yeah, that's the main thing. That's the main thing. Dorcas has a question for you. She says, "I have to ask, what is the lock of the sweaty armpit? Is it Rannoch Moor?" Yes. It is. Well it done, is. Dorcas. You got that right. She's been with us yesterday and today and asked lots of good questions. That was in the pub quiz we had last night. Oh, uh, was it indeed? <laughs> right. Okay. Um, to what extent then, when you're doing your personal photographs? Does the commercial stuff come into it? Do you take your personal photographs and think, oh, I know what ad this, what firm this would be a good ad photograph for, or is it no, completely separate? So, totally separate. I know. I mean, uh, some of the some of the images that I that I have go into a stock library, mm -hmm. um, and yes, I get paid if someone uses them for something, and sometimes you can get paid vast sums of money um, because they use they're using them for an exclusive three year usage. Right. Okay. Which means you can't show them anywhere I else. I can't. You can't. No, you, the the, 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 the ag agency cannot sell them to another client in that three years, and so you know they have to pay you quite a lot of money. And being a landscape photographer, again, some of our speakers have spoken about it being quite a solitary pursuit. Obviously, when you're working commercially, you've got a whole team with you, mm. and then when you do your personal stuff, you're completely on your own. Which mm. do you prefer? Both. Both. Yeah, I, I really like. I, it's a great, great. It's a great balance. And um, yeah, if I don't get any, if I don't get enough of the commercial thing, I really miss it. And if mm -hmm. I don't get enough of my personal thing, I get edgy and miss it. Yeah. So yeah, th th it's I like them because they're so totally different. Mm -hmm. They give you different things. Presumably. They give me different things. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, yeah. listen, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Okay. How's it been being part of this conference? Oh, it's brilliant. It's uh, it's really really good. Yeah. It does so feel a, a bit new like experience a family. For me. And yeah. You know, putting myself in the in the sort of public spotlight, which I wouldn't normally do. You know, mm -hmm. not because mainly because you know it's not it's not within the sort of um, boundaries of how I like to operate. I'm I'm not a very good speaker. You know, it, th this makes me more nervous than doing a commercial job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you're feeling less nervous no, now because you I'm were fine. great on stage, and that's been absolutely super. I hope you've all enjoyed that wherever you're watching. Remember, it's hashtag onland to ask any questions. Hans Strand will be here at half past two this afternoon. But for now, Paul, thank you very much thank you indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you.